damn, damn. Oh well, right. Hello YouTube, it's uh, Wow Sly. Uh, we're in the garage, the shack. Uh, my desk is covered in stuff, I have never tidy away. I can't even get to the radios. They're buried under an iPhone, a logbook, and some random crap. Um, so, working conditions are absolute nightmare. The entire garage is a dumping ground. Um, but yeah, damn, damn, damn. The other day, when I started this, um, I, I dropped my control panel. I took it all off the old system and put it on the shelf and picked something up and I dropped that and I lost. I lost the little flip cover that goes across here. Absolutely gutted. And I'm sure it obviously fell off um, when it hit the ground. Um, still working. So you saw the last video all lit up and so on. Just the plastic thing pinged off across the garage. I think I found it a few days later, but because I didn't know it came off here, I remember picking something up and going, oh, what's that? Looking at it and then just throwing it, but I can't remember where I threw it. But believe it or not, the garage at the front, I won't show it to you for security reasons, has been tidied up. We've got all new furniture in the house, so all the old furniture is stored up in the garage with the other stuff that goes in the garage. Um, <clears throat> so the front of the garage is fine. This is the back bit here is just partitioned off. So it's just for like radios and working on stuff like this. So, right, we're going to get onto this today because my little uh, marine waterproof 12 volt outlet socket turned up today. Um, it was straight, but then when I screwed it in, uh, I think the hole was offset and it twisted as I screwed it in. I'm not really bothered because it's not really on display. Um, I've got few of these um, little blue LED voltmeters I used on my first build uh, I've got one I've got to dig the other two out somewhere so I want to well I did think about having one on here just to save power but I'm gonna put two on here uh, I used to have three for like power coming in what was in the bank and how much was going out I've now decided I don't need to know how much is going out because it's always roughly the same as what's in the bank anyway um, so I'm just going to have one for what's in the bank, so that will come on when the system's turned on. The battery's disconnected at the moment, so it's not turning on. And then I'm going to get the other one when I've dug them out, probably on the desk somewhere. I'm going to have the other one on there, um, telling me how much solar's coming in. It's always nice to know. It's all right pointing a solar panel at the sun or pointing it like south or east for the morning or whatever. But it's nice to know you've got the angle where you're going to be getting the most. So many times I've put a solar panel out for starters and I've been getting like 12 or 13 volts. I thought that's fine. But then I've tilted the solar panel back and it's jumped up to like 21 volts. So for the sake of, um, you know, losing or gaining, you know, 5 or 10 volts, it's definitely worth keeping an eye on how much power actually comes in. So I'm going to try and dig out the voltmeters. Um, I've decided today I'm going to lose this. That's how I connect the solar panel if you've not seen the previous video because the panels normally come with this attachment. Um, yeah, both my panels have came with both the, with these fitting. I don't know what it's called, but uh, I'm going to take that off and I'm going to get another one of these cigarette lighter adapters and then put a cigarette li lighter lead on the solar panel. That one's wired permanently to the battery anyway, so I don't need to worry about that. But then I can um, so obviously plug the panel in or plug it into another 12 volt power supply, i.e. a mains power for the radios or something I could plug straight into the input to charge up the battery. Um, so yeah, I might have to order maybe some more of these because I might want more than one outlet. I should have bought more in the first place. But anyway, like I said, no plans. I'm just building it as I go. Uh, right, I'm going to get on and find um, some more of these. They're in here somewhere. Next two, right? Is that right? I've got a pair of thermal socks, max expedition playing cards, and a whole load of uh, CO2 cartridges. Oh, and a pen. Place is a mess. But that's how we like it, innit, blokes? 
Um, right. Right, we're getting there. Just uh, got what we've got so far. Let's try and work out what we've got and what we're doing. Right, so far we've got the fault meters installed. And that one's wired up directly to the control panel. This one's getting wired up now to uh, the switch. All the wires are hidden. So the two pre-drilled drilled holes, all the wires go through there and at the back so nothing's exposed. Uh, when I've finished, because I've lost the flap for this, I'm just going to put a bit of black tape over it. The handyman's secret weapon. Well, the secret weapon is gaffer tape, but gaffer tape's conductive. Um, so yeah, right, we'll plug in the panel and we'll show you that side working. Right, the panel's plugged in, the external panel. The internal one goes straight to the battery, so it won't show the volts on here. Uh, however, if that is in sunlight, you will get a misreading on the total battery bank reading because it will calculate obviously what's in the bank battery and any input coming from that. Bearing in mind that is low wattage, and um, you know I know how it works. <laughs> That's the main thing. Right, so we're going to hold the solar panel now up to the light in the garage and we should get a reading up there but I'll do it with the uh, light off the video so we can see a bit better first we'll turn it on right so we've got two lights indicating the amount of battery power two out of three so the battery we can presume is about half flat or half yeah half flat not half charged um, there's a tiny little glow on the charge where the solar panel is obviously picking up a little bit of light but not enough Volts to uh, be red, so we'll hold that up at the the light up there. There we go. And again, if I tilt it, seven point nine point eight point zero. Don't know if it's fluctuating or if it's just my arm moving. Right, so there you go. That's working. Now we just got to do the other one. Right, all done. Sorry for the low light. Um, my lamps are off because the plug socket's been used for Christmas bloody lights. So, here's the case. One inline built in 12 volt. Uh, 1.5 watt, I think it is, or 2 watt solar panel, trickle charge ones you use for like your car. Um, that's why I permanently the battery. Um, the one that's saying 5.5 is coming in this way. The battery is on 11.8 uh, volts, so it needs a bit of a charge. So I could unplug the uh, external solar panel and it will trickle charge itself outside like this or I can leave this inside and have this solar panel outside and it will charge a lot faster. I've got one 12 volt outlet so I might have to get a few more of these maybe put two or three maybe four down here um, but again it's only just to plug in sort of phones uh, or the uh, the inverter to run like small electrical appliances. Um, main system off is obviously a 240 household light switch. Uh, cheap, I think it's a 30 amp, 40 amp. I can't remember now. Don't quote me. I've had it a while. Uh, charge controller. These are rated, I think, 38 volts. So don't comment and say my panel can kick out 21 volts. It will blow them because I, uh, I deliberately bought the ones so we're like 30 odd for the handle more power than my panel puts out. So I'll have to get this one charged tomorrow because it's late now, it's pitch black outside. Um, definitely not going to get a charge, I'm only getting 5.5 volts 
from the panel there at the moment. But if I lift the panel up to the light bulb, that's literally holding it right there. There we go, all works. Um, is it really? If I disc oh yeah, I've just got to tape up the terminals here because I've lost the flappy thing. Very, 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 very bad. Uh, so there we go. Systems plugged in, uh, switched on. The sockets live, um, but I need a bit more juice going through the inverter because I should have had that coming straight from the battery. But then if I leave something plugged in, it will kill the battery. And if I go through the output, this shuts down when it gets below a certain volt and won't kick in until it's like 12 point something. So it's not actually kicked in yet because I haven't got enough power coming out. Um, so that's it as it is. Not connected to anything. Uh, obviously, presuming the battery's charged or we'll just pretend the battery's fully charged. Again, that battery's been sitting around for months. Uh, the system's working now, it's functional, standing alone. Um, and uh, if I am out, say with the radios, it will trickle charge itself while I'm out and about. Or if I'm going camping or using this for some sort of like SHTF thing, I plug in the external power um, thing. On its own, that will power the, my radios, which is why it was built. It was to build, uh, it was built to power um, like CB and amateur radios while out portable. Um, and obviously charge itself, self, so I can take this out camping for the weekend, and it will power my charge my phone and power my radios. If I'm going camping with the family. I'll have to drop in another couple of batteries and take the bigger panel. Um, but as it is, it's small, it's lightweight, it's compact. And, um, you know, that'll help, you know, go on the back of my trailer, go in the boot of the car. Um, so I can take that out and use it for what I need it for. It's basically a two-in-one. Um, you know, it's power, portable power supply, self-charging for sort of radios, mobile phone. Uh, while out solo camping um, or I can use it with the bigger panel to power things in the house if we have a power cut i.e. the laptop um, TV um, and if I go camping again I can take the bigger so if I go camping I can take the bigger panel and uh, powerlessly the appliances we need to when we go camping which is just LED lights charging phones, charging the laptop and uh, the kids DS's, nothing major. Um, and this, the, the fridge will run off this nicely as well because it ran off the same thing last time just in a different casing. Right, we can't see because it's dark but um, yeah we all know what it is. If not, go back into the previous video I uploaded about this about a week ago. Um, it's an old film reel case would have took film reels. There's one came from Odeon, black cartridge that the cases go in, black reel. Um, you slot them in there. But I've used it for a better purpose because I haven't got a 36mm projector. Right, thanks for watching YouTube. I'm going to turn this off, put it away. Simple. Open it up. Switch it on, plug your stuff in, unplug your stuff, turn it off, close it up. No plugging in, no wires, no messing about. The only thing I need to do is maybe plug in the external solar panel, you know, if need be. Um, but tomorrow I'm going to sit this in the garden um, if we get sunlight. Uh, if it's raining, I'll uh, keep this in the garage and then plug in the other solar panel. There we go. Thanks for watching YouTube. Take care. Catch you on the next video. Uh, just been wanting to get this done. It's Christmas now. And the town down the road from me has had a lot of power cuts the past week. And I don't want to end up like them people. I want to be prepared.